Hello all and welcome to episode 5 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. And uh, before we start today's session, uh, I want to encourage all of you to subscribe to our uh, channel on YouTube, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, and we also have our RSS feed. And if you are an audio listener, uh, you can get the audio version of the podcast. You really don't don't have to look at our ugly faces and, and enjoy it while you drive to uh, your work and especially people in, in major cities in India today, the drive to work is at least 45 minutes to one hour. And we hope to give you your once in a week, you can spend half an hour, 45 minutes with us and uh, get get our perspective on how enterprise technology is progressing. And with me today, I have Komaran, who is the chief mentor for Tiny Magic, and he produces a, a excellent show called Saturday Architecture, and I participate in that uh, as a non-architect, and he has a lot of uh, experience in, in guiding people on making the right choices in architecture and making right choices in growing their organization. And we also have Nirosh, who is a technical leader, and I'll let him introduce himself. Perfect. So I have some experience working for uh, some large organizations and then um, working as the chief architect and then uh, join another company where I play the role of uh, the CTO. Thanks, Nirosh. So today, what we are targeting to look at is the, the, the larger perspective of how the enterprise technologies have changed over the last 10 years. And, and as you all know, this is the end of the 2010s. So, so next, next, uh, next January, it is going to be start of the 2020s. And uh, so we wanted to just look at a perspective of how technology has changed how enterprise uh, uh, technology, especially how it is used in the subcontinent has changed over the last so many years, how it is the same thing as the rest of the world, how it is different, and, and what are the things, how long it has taken us to come to the point where we are today. Uh, and we look at things which have gained momentum, th things which have lost momentum, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, Kumaran, what do you think about, what are the things which you have? You've, you've been, you sp I, I believe, large part of the last decade you spent I I working for Microsoft, right? And, and right. you have seen in seen a lot of customers throughout. So so what is, what is your perspective on what has happened in the last 10 years? What comes to your mind, top of mind? I think uh, it's an interesting conundrum that has happened, right? There is... Uh, the technology world itself is, I would call it, uh, the current industry using technology. Uh, in the past 10 years, what has happened is there's a lot of change that has happened. But there are some organizations which are pretty much still in the medieval ages. Okay, The organizations by themselves haven't shifted. The technologies have shifted so much. So, And, and I'm giving an analogy of something like somebody in 1800s to somebody in the uh, 2020s, right? Um, let me give an example. 2010 was when the cloud was really hitting the real road, right? Uh, something as simple as, let's say, uh, a basic infrastructure like your mail server, okay? The cloud was there, okay? And then at that time, the claim to claim was that every the on-prem data centers will be gone and uh, we would have a uh, lot of shift there. But 10 years later, when I'm looking at it now, there are a lot of enterprises still, probably around 50 to 60% of their systems are still on-prem. Okay, so we now what has happened is there is this digital divide has increased. So there is one part of a company or a set of companies which are on the cutting edge and then there is another set of companies which are let's call it on the uh, still the traditional decade old technologies and they have their own limitations and fair reasoning and i think this is an interesting divide that has got a kind of pulled out companies one from the other okay 
and uh, dealing with this challenge understanding that something like this has happened uh, is an interesting place to be right so nirosh nirosh what what have you seen you you've also spent uh, a last at least 10 years in a, in a working for a large organization working for international customers right uh, maybe some customers uh, uh, in the subcontinent also but what what is what is your what is your view of how the technology has has uh, the differences which you see the international customers versus what you what you saw happening around you while you were working for large large companies yes uh, that's as as kumaran said i like to pick back on the concept of uh, digital divisions mm-hmm. so you see a, a huge difference in between technology usage like as an example if you from sector point of view also you see that difference as an example if you take healthcare sector the mm-hmm. digital involvement is very low due to various mm-hmm. reasons but then there are other sectors like maybe e-commerce has evolved largely uh, mm-hmm. with the help of digital uh, uh, innovations then again there is another interesting perspective that uh, we need to understand and that is even the companies technology providers has this uh, division mm-hmm. just like if you look at uh, how big giant uh, uh, retailers acquire mm-hmm. the businesses the uh, all these boutique shops used to have in our uh, part of the world it is happening in uh, technology world as well there all these digital companies which has lot of power lot of money has probably developed certain things to a level where all these small companies can't even imagine one of the good area is ai so as mm-hmm. an example if you look at uh, maybe uh, uh, Google DeepMind, maybe uh, uh, Alpha Zero, Alpha Go, uh, mm-hmm. and then certain developments happen uh, with Tesla. Those mm-hmm. things are like very tall structures that all these other companies can't even imagine how developed those people are. So that separation mm-hmm. also happening uh, uh, while uh, um, in industries uh, with respect to usage of technology, there is a dif- dif- difference, as uh, Kumaran said, and. Mm-hmm. with respect to innovation of technology there is a huge uh, difference uh, and a deviation as well so that's what i see uh, happened very aggressively uh, within last uh, 10 years the digital mm-hmm. separation is so much so that some digital innovate innovators can't even compete with some other uh, companies or big giant uh, in uh, maybe money point of view right. so kumaran uh, what do you, what do you think has been the impact of devices as such right so one is the mobile devices right so how in the last 10 years i believe the smartphones have had a big impact on how technology just not within the just the enterprise but even the consumer technology how the mobile revolution i would say what 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 was the duration do you think in the last 10 years what was the inflection point when you think this mobile actually started uh changing the way the 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 the, the way enterprises behave versus versus how consumers behave and what was the influence of the consumers on the enterprise that is uh, some interesting i i'm sure you have some interesting examples of around how that has influenced uh, the technology world Uh, it, it's it's again the irony or the paradox of the digital divide again comes up even when you look at devices okay so for example uh, my mom my mom is 80 years old okay she uses a uber to book her cab okay she uses youtube to listen to her uh, uh, satsang or that gyan videos right uh, religious songs and stuff like that so she asked my sons to bookmark devotional songs and she plays it okay you take a millennial today walking into a corporate company actually he can't do lot of his job work inside a it services company mm-hmm. firewalls odcs this restriction that restriction they cannot use their mobile inside the office kind of a mm-hmm. thing right so but then uh 
that same employee can use lot of apps outside mm. so that what's happening because of this is the uh, disappointment or the morale of people let's call it the digital citizen is getting affected a lot 10 years back organizations needn't have to deal with it they pretty much have a similar let's call it level 3 experience inside or outside the company today outside the company is 10 inside the company it's 3 so they actually have to deal with that morale and that cultural and the feeling problem they feel handicap when they walk it so if our devices have then they have put an implicit challenge of demoralizing the digital citizen inside corporates so, so some companies are probably <clears throat> more successful in, more in su- making that more successful in making the transition but in terms of in terms of attitude in the subcontinent this is this is for you nirosh do you think <clears throat> there is a difference in how the like kumaran was mentioning there there's a difference in how uh how the companies which are enabling all this technology treat their own employees right they they are more more restricted than what what the customers they are serving for right they like he said no access to devices so do you see that as as a, as a uh major culture change which is still not happened or this is this is now this is pretty much uh that whole concept of open culture is is coming in uh <clears throat> what is your what is your experience over the last 10 years you've seen yes uh, mobile device is uh, in my opinion is a extension of your brain now so that whatever capabilities say as an example you want to know about a person in the past you need to remember him now there is a device that help you uh, recall your memories and you want to maybe know about a place that you want to go earlier you used to talk to somebody who has been there before now you use uh, mobile so that it's a extension of your brain so that it's it's a way of now in in the brain you have maybe 1 billion neurons and then certain capacity to remember certain things now this device has given you additional memory so that it's it's now becoming a part of your brain the only only challenge uh, you have with the mobile device is that uh, the connection is very slow in between your brain and and the mobile device uh, i think uh, mm-hmm. there was a interesting perspective i heard from uh, uh, tesla ceo while mm-hmm. he said that uh, you you have two thumbs to operate uh, your phone so two mm-hmm. thumbs are very slow so that the connection is very slow so that what mm-hmm. we need to do is to uh, increase the the communication speed in between your brain and the the mobile device so the trend is toward that so that uh, when you talk about uh, companies how they are adapting those changes which are mandatory and which which are going i mean the change is happening with lot of potential so that you can't stop that mm-hmm. but uh, what you see is uh, when companies talk about bring your own device and all I'll mm-hmm. give you a very good example of uh, one of those companies that I used to work for in in my uh, past uh, days mm-hmm. is that uh, they they allow you to bring your own device but then they install a lot of software and mm-hmm. then gain control of your device mm-hmm. virtually they can do anything to your device now this is my device and right. giving control uh, uh, to the organization has been to maybe reinstall and then uninstall softwares that i have installed which is not okay. going to work right so that's what uh, uh, i see so that in the subcontinent uh, mm. i see the trend since it's it's a huge huge trend uh, you see that lot of initiatives happening but mm-hmm. uh, probably with the challenges uh, they have uh, with respect to maybe provide secure development environment mhm i think uh, that's the main challenge uh, they have that prevent them from maybe uh, really allow people to uh, use their device uh, within mm-hmm. the 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 solution uh, providing space that's my view right so 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 was there any difference in in uh, in the types of uh, uh, enterprises which you worked for uh kumaran uh, that you saw 
people working for multinational corporations have a different view versus people working for for india based sri lanka based organizations which are which are in that area right was there a significant difference which you saw in terms of attitude or in terms of uh, in terms of adoption of technology uh what how far behind are these organizations compared to what what they were working for in the multinational space come on what do you, what do you, in the terms of how the, in terms of relative speed i okay my perspective uh, personal experience i think both are moving at the pretty much the same velocity mm-hmm. okay uh and i guess each one has their own things which slowed them down for example the western industries uh, the western world if you look at it they already are at let's say level 7 in automation okay mm-hmm. so their existing systems uh slow them down for example okay uh, compliance and those kind of needs uh for if you take the indian subcontinent and i think it's still that uh the way they operate right in terms of capability in terms of how letting go of control okay the um the awareness of for example let's take a very simple case cloud okay now i have lot of apps on the cloud okay i, I mean i have lot of internal apps in the western world i have my own data centers to run and i had certain uh, comfort or security over having it right 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 uh now if i have to move it to the cloud uh, with stuff like gdpr it's become a complex issue i can't generally move it that easily okay so there is external constraints which is kind of enforcing and i'm still not very comfortable or secure handling that part okay or my integrations with the other systems are very tight so if i move my app to the cloud i don't know how it will affect others so that kind of slows me down from a western perspective from an india perspective i had this one or two guys who are having these servers running these applications i have a small it team i have a couple of servers running all these apps now if i have to go to cloud i had all these guys who learned through experience right so they started off from maintaining a simple unix server then they slowly learned little by little so the learning curve of the internal it team i had a lot of time right mm-hmm. whereas the cloud or the past even though 10 years seems large the larger part of the past 10 years that team had built in getting familiarity with the application and not with the ecosystem right okay so they be- became good in handling the technology aspect of the application but not the ecosystem so now if you say for example hey you know what let's move just as take the let me take that email itself right let me move the email to the crowd okay right the ceo and the cfo does not know how to handle the cost parameters they are scared mm-hmm. and rightly so okay because we have western customers complaining i moved to my cloud now my expenses have gone up right right okay so that's one aspect the second if you have to move to the cloud there's a lot of additional skills which the uh, it people have to pick up they cannot do with a admin based thing they have to know a little more scripting they have to understand the basics of, of the how the cloud operates more now right. they haven't had time to do that and that right. culture of learning was not built in now that is the thing which is slowing up probably the people who are in the subcontinent so in a way i would say the general thing is there is a comfort zone by which certain results are achieved okay and that is kind of slowing both of them down i wouldn't say there's too much of velocity difference between the western world and the eastern world i think one important point which you mentioned was uh having your own data centers and being able to manage some of those things locally and i have actually means i've been with some some of the some of the customers who actually this is as recent as 2 years ago they were thinking mm-hmm. we have better cost per vm 
at inside our data center then we go to aws or azure or google cloud we can deliver better cost for vm and and they were looking at it completely from a different uh, uh, sort of financial perspective and it happened to be actually a financial company also right so so they they and and i believe they were looking at it completely uh, with a myopic vision of uh, of what actually cloud is giving them they were thinking that cloud is just giving them vms at a, at a larger scale and they don't own the infrastructure that was the only perspective they were looking at and they <clears throat> and, and this is as recent as two years ago they did not even have a plan that we really need to go to the cloud so it's because we are cheaper internally I, we really don't have to work hard to uh, bring this uh, our uh, infrastructure to the new new cloud right so Nirosh, you, I, I saw you were making some notes uh, on something. Is, is there something which you want to want to mention? Definitely, definitely. I, I want to make sure that uh, since this is a recording, I want to make sure that I, I cover the important topics. So yes, yeah. what what I make note about is that one of the key words that, that we missed is the continuous development and taking advantage of the economics of scale. So in right. your case, uh, what what you uh, the, in your example, the, it's fair for that uh, financial company to assess their current requirement and then uh, do their balance sheet and say that, yes, this is more advantageous uh, to be on local cloud or private cloud. Yeah. But then right. you need to understand the kind of technology advancement happened outside. That if you're not flowing with the trend, then you will not be right in the next wave of cloud if you stay local. So that the cost may be higher for you to go to that uh, wave and then maybe ride on that wave once it comes. But if you're on the cloud with the wave, then you will automatically piggyback on the advantages happen uh, on the platform level. So that's one aspect. The other thing is uh, with respect to the, 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 the changes happen in the digital environment, right here, there are two main changes. Uh, one is uh, you try to reduce cost of services by mean of uh, uh, taking advantage of economic of scale. So there is this cloud uh, related development and mm -hmm. technology also moving toward low code and low code solution. Mm -hmm. I think in the future, you will have like uh, 65 to 70% of the solutions which we do today will be done using low code and no code uh, solution which again, a way of uh, taking advantage of economic of scale. The other thing uh, which is very interesting uh, that I uh, experienced uh, today is after these, uh, these lot of uh, companies uh, want to have digital uh, services, we mm -hmm. tend to, uh, we tend to, the service providers tend to treat the customer as the good, right? Mm. But now <laughs> I see that uh, there is a trend from customer side where they take advantage of that and then mm -hmm. maybe squeeze the service providers in such a way so that uh, their profit share <laughs> is so minimum they can't mm -hmm. hardly survive in this industry. So that, right. uh, in my opinion, probably in next uh, probably decade or so, mm -hmm. I will not be surprised if you see that service providers are a little more offensive toward their customer mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. they are now because that trend is also happening because you when you when you treat your customer as you good then there is a there is a tendency to take advantage of that because this is all about competition so that mm -hmm. now i see that customers are taking advantage of that uh, that uh, position so those two trends is yeah I think this is there's a very very interesting interesting uh, perspective you brought about about uh, the outsourcing scenario right or even yes. basically uh, uh, let's say a financial company or manufacturing company where the technology is not really their core competence but uh, this is something which they need to have right so so kumar did do you do you agree with what what nirosh just said that that uh, there is uh, this trend of uh, uh, squeezing your uh, service provider uh, and and sort of taking advantage of this competition 
you are releasing the cat among the pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I would say, yes, they are doing it. And I think they should be doing it. Okay. Because I've been telling this constantly that the technology teams, right, across the world haven't really delivered that value to the business. So there's a sense of disappointment and disillusionment with IT overall from the business. I mean, look, we look at the amount of projects that have got scrapped. And if you look at it by and large, right, the best response that we come out with any underperformance, right, of any application is the next version will have a better feature. Now, mm -hmm. imagine we bought a car, okay, mm -hmm. and you say this car has got a problem. That guy says, buy the next car, we will fix it. Or you go to a restaurant and then you say, there is salt less in this. You'll say, order the next dish. In the next dish, I will make it better and give you. You will kick that guy in his ass. Yeah, right? right. But right. but in IT, we make we, may, we have made those statements without a qualm. And I think mm -hmm. in this decade, the customer has said, enough is enough. Okay? Mm -hmm. Give me so, good food. Yeah. Give okay. me a car which I can drive. And right. I think that is one of, probably they go little extreme to that point. And maybe mm -hmm. that's what we are also experiencing I agree with Nirosh that's happening, but I'm kind of telling it's only fair that it will happen. And as technology guys, we should accept responsibility that we are being treated like that and do something about it. Okay. Okay. I, I think that, that, that's so. So I think uh, I believe the whole cycle has already happened in the last decade, right? From from in 2010s with with almost most companies just having web presence and not really a digital strategy to now most companies now having a digital strategy and and trying to uh, get the benefits of of uh, of technology for their business right and and, and i would it will be hard to find any company today which does not have a digital presence right besides maybe small mom and pop shops any business worth its name in the subcontinent has to have have web presence has to have uh, digital interfaces to interaction for for their employees for their customers for their suppliers right so that integration how far do you think uh, uh, has come along and, and do you think that is is it come to saturation level just if you were to scale it from level zero to level 10 where do you think we are in terms of enabling that whole whole digital space for for any company let's say today do we have is it so if for a medium sized company is it really affordable to do all what i just said affordably compared to what it was 10 years ago kumar what do you think about that uh well it's okay affordable right now is the cost purely financial or is it a mindset i so would say will... mindset yeah mindset yeah. means if from i'm not saying uh, affordable here means it has to give me returns it has to be beneficial for my future i'm not just talking about in terms of uh, uh, cost right now right so of course that is a big component of it but but how how you think it has changed in the last 10 years i think uh... We still, uh, in terms of levels, if you ask, I think it's still at two, three, uh, as far as local companies go. Um, yeah, I'll give a very specific example. You walk into any medium-sized company, okay, and then tell them, you know, I want something. Uh, let's say I'm an end user. I'm sitting in HR or I'm in finance, okay. I want to collect three data from my employee. Some three attributes I want to collect from my employee, okay? And I just want to know how many people have given and how many haven't given it, mm -hmm. okay? Majority of the companies, the business user cannot achieve this without some IT guy stepping in. Mm -hmm. That is medieval ages. Mm -hmm. Okay? We can use, there are a lot of self-service applications today by which the end user can create their own forms. If you step into the outside world, probably somebody can use a survey monkey or a type pad or a, a Google forms to get this done. Mm -hmm. Inside the enterprise, 
a VP or a GM finance has to send on request to the IT and still wait. This is the reality which I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. We got to get over that. I think we still have a lot of work to be done. What about you, Niroj? Do you, do you agree with what uh, what Kumaran just mentioned? Is that the status today uh, in, in the organizations uh, or is it improving? No, I, I think uh, Kumran is absolutely right. And, and you see a uh, lot of uh, companies now introducing this role, chief digital officer. Uh, right. So, so uh, yes, I, I, I agree with uh, what Kumran said. All right. So I think I think I think I think we have a very exciting decade ahead of us, uh, where uh, uh, where I think there is there is a lot of scope for for small and medium sized companies to actually make a real big difference uh, for their employees, for their customers, for for their suppliers, and really enable some of these these digital digital technologies. And and I believe it has now it is it is much more possible than what it was 10 years ago there is there is m- many more uh, options available to them uh, uh, to begin with the entry level has come down quite a bit compared to what it was 10 years ago if if you were to enable any of those technologies today it, it is much much cheaper but what is not still cheap what is still not cheap is the right advice to make sure that it happens right and uh, and a lot of it is available for free, but it, it is just that putting all that context still takes effort and vision, which which uh, I believe that the CTOs should be providing to, to all these organizations. Uh, just one quick point I had yeah. to make, right? If you look at 10 years back, control and centralization was at the core of corporate governance. Right. Okay. Cloud and self-governance means letting go of control and being more vulnerable. And that mindset is needed to unlock the digital value. You cannot achieve uh, digital equality or digital full value without letting go of control. I think that's our key struggle. Excellent point, Kumaran. And I think now we are ready to hear your uh, book recommendation for today, which, which which we believe should power the next decade for a lot of the companies uh, in the subcontinent. I uh, I think one of the key things which talks about uh, the book is uh, Hit Refresh by Satya Nadella, uh, CEO of Microsoft. And I think uh, that book is pretty insightful because it talks about the growth mindset, right? How do you, a growth mindset essentially builds in risk taking, vulnerability, learning mistakes and things like that. And this needs to also happen with the leadership team. They should be open to let, letting go of control, right? Uh, So let the business users make their own forms. They might make some mistakes. It's okay, right? No more five reviews of an application, 10 approvals, just get that and get to moving. And that book, kind of talks about the transition of how Microsoft challenges which has to fade, right? Uh, Like, let's take, for example, SQL Server. On-prem gave us huge revenues. And we had to switch to a cloud where there was a serious dip in interview revenues for a couple of years. The leadership had to navigate and learn how to do that so that the digital benefits of cloud can flow to Microsoft and to the companies around. I think it's a great book which talks about not just the technology, but the mindset shift that needs to happen to really unlock the digital value, which has happened in the past 10 years. It exists, potential exists, but that book is a great tool to get that insight. Thank you, Kumaran. That is a great recommendation. And uh, we really encourage you, all of you, to listen to the podcast, recommend it to your uh, to your friends and uh, colleagues who you think will benefit out of uh, uh, this podcast and please do subscribe and that's how we know that what what we do here is valuable to you and uh, thank you Kumaran Uh, you can find Kumaran on tinymagic.com and he has a YouTube channel Uh, you can find Nirosh on LinkedIn uh, and uh, uh, he's he's, uh, always keen to connect with the new people 
uh, and as a, as a technology leader, I'm sure he is always looking for good people to to help him. Uh, any any last words, Nirosh? Well, I think uh, with respect to future, what I what I believe is that uh, especially the the technology companies in the subcontinent need to shift from providing services mindset to innovating uh, digital future. Especially with respect to AI, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a guy who always believed that the stuff that baked into your DNA has to be used in your competition. So if you look at the AI, we've been studying about the brain for the last 5,000 years in this region. Sure. We have baked those stuff into our DNA, but we have not innovated anything in AI age. That, that's a very All the algorithms, TensorFlow is from Google, and somebody else from the West innovate that, but they were not believing in brain functions. They were not mm. studying brain for long enough. We've been studying brain for the last 5,000 years, so we should start, <laughs> uh, start innovating here. That's a yes, beautiful that's... perspective. Yeah, true, very true. I think that I think that that should be the inspiration for all the innovators in the subcontinent to use the the what what Nirosh defined as what what is in our DNA to make sure we are able to innovate uh, and add value to to all our organizations uh, for the future. So thank you all for for this uh, a very scintillating session. Uh, and we will see you again in uh, two weeks and that is probably the end of the year and uh, see you next time thank you all <laughs>